three, two. Romeo, Romeo, we're for out there, Romeo. Who do you think has a bigger lightsaber, Donald Trump or Zeitgeist Zealots? I mean, come on. Really? Hey, everyone, we're Zeitgeist Zealots. I'm Major. I'm Robbie. Matt. And I am Chip. What's up, everyone? Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for coming back. We're going to break down the Penguin. We're going to talk about Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, and the most recent battle, uh, what I like to call Kirkland Helms Deep. But first, guys, just wanted to talk to you about a, a couple things in, in the news. <laughs> Kirkland <laughs> I'm glad. I'm gl glad you appreciate that. Uh, I love Kirkland Brand though. Kirkland Brand's not bad. It's good on a. It's good on a budget. But guys, I think we've been tricked here. We're over here, and this podcast is going to be a lot of praise for the Penguin. Don't get me wrong. But have we been duped here? Is this not fresh, new, original IP or new concepts? Bitch, this is Game of Thrones. Motherfuckers took a Varys spin off and then they just put like a penguin skin on top of it this guy is as snaky as little finger this guy is yeah. maneuvering between parties castles kings whatever you want to call it's it like impressive it's <laughs> so good the political intrigue like like he's doing the the falcons versus uh the moroni but then also we're going to talk about the hangman so there's like a three-way going on now anyway this, why is this so good? It's just Game of Thrones, guys. It's Game of Thrones with Batman characters. That's all. It's just another game of D&D. &D. Uh, speaking of um, tabletop and, and role-playing, that was a terrible transition. A old presentation. Robbie, you might have heard about this. An old presentation by Sweet Baby Inc. Oh, that's right. That good old Gamergate 2 oh. company. Sweet Baby Inc. A new, uh, an old presentation resurfaced where... One uh -oh. of their their main talking points, like a bullet point in the investor presentation, was burning down the gaming industry. They're, there's their mission accomplished. They're doing a good job, if you had to ask me. Holy shit! But like, wow, yeah, I didn't see that one. Yeah, no, that's that's mind mind blowing. I I can't believe that they're just able to operate like this. I mean, like. I believe in a free market. I'm able. I believe that they should be able to operate like this. I can't fucking believe like Ubisoft or, or Square Enix or any of these fucking companies are. Why are they are on, board with on board with that? <laughs> be it's because of the hiring managers. The people making these decisions are, are also hate the fan base, hate the player base, hate the endemions of the world. Uh, but the nice thing about gaming and the nice thing about entertainment is variety it's the spice of life right like if you don't want to play a sweet baby game you don't have to play a sweet baby game this makes me think that james gunn could have played the dc universe a little bit better matt i definitely get your take on this as well but what if we just jumped in balls deep into this new dc universe where we had the reign of supermen. That's right, plural. So you've got four or five supermans, right? Different men. And then whichever, you're kind of cheating at this point, right? But then whichever uh, character the audience gravitates towards the most, you do a trilogy based off of that. And then you just fucking, that's how you build your, your empire. That's how you get your next five to seven Superman movies. Yeah, you give the audience five Superman to say, hey, which one do you like the most? And then you follow that one. What do you think? Is that a stupid idea? I mean, it's certainly a unique idea, jumping off in the, I wouldn't even say the middle of a, of a storyline. It's more like the end of it. Tabulating thoughts. I know, I just blew his yeah, mind. That's exactly, that's exactly will, what it is. I will say this. With how the Penguin is going, I kind of like how we're exploring ancillary characters and not focusing on main characters. Um, you would. Okay. I hate how every time we do DC, it's Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Flash, the usuals. Mm -hmm. Aquaman, and then hey, it's time to redo the DCU. It's Let's been ten years. Let's do Batman, it. Let's, let's Superman, do it all over again. Aquaman, Flash. Like it's in the same order. That's valid. And doing so something give, different give with Penguin. Another, 
exactly and i like how gritty so different. and r and this is this is the yeah. thing, how r r rated it is yeah these superhero shows treat the audience like they're adults you know we want you know the gritty you know craziness as well as the campiness you know later on but give us these stories and i mean look at wolverine and deadpool from marvel one of the most successful marvel projects ever rated r yeah all right so was don't more. do another superman give us give us the, the 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 penguin i've never heard of the hangman i have never heard of the hangman and we'll get into that later right. but it's like you know what the hell With the uh, halloween, uh, long halloween uh so well, are, does this make me more bane, excited give me, give me give me bane and the and the ninjas you know qui-gon jinn there um you know what the, the so. hand yeah. uh <laughs> What does this make you feel? This makes me feel way more optimistic about the Green Lantern franchise or TV show coming out. Hopefully it'll turn into multiple seasons. Uh, but that's been, you know, the Green Lantern franchise for HBO Max. That's been in development for, geez, since the end of Flash or the end of Green Arrow, like four or five years, it feels like. But this this taste of quality gives me gives me real, real hope. But... Stick around and find out. Subscribe if you haven't already. We'll be covering it all as it comes out. Because we're, while we're not unbiased here, we will <clears throat> definitely tell you our biases that they're very easy to pick out from, from the very beginning. Which is not the same for all people. What were you saying, Matt? I was just going to say, I, like to give you a quick point, I hate DC. And I like the Penguin. And I love Peacemaker. Give me some more Peacemaker. Give me Season some more. Two. Yep. Give me some more of that. You know. Give me some more of this rated R. The penguin. You so know. Funny. You can be. You can be campy and you can be serious at the same time too. It's it's great. So keep doing what you're doing with this type of stuff. Not going back to Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Aquaman. He wants more swamp creature. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> great, great, great point, Matthew. <laughs> Fuck, I just. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Um, we're gonna get to the penguin. This is the most important thing I want to talk about. Crazy stuff happening. Let's look at the penguin. <laughs> but before we do, there's one extra thing I, I really want to highlight. It's very important for me, my personal agenda, which is to awake everyone up to Operation Mockingbird. Uh, and if you don't know what that is, go ahead and Google it. It's wild. It's mind blowing. Uh, but basically, the CIA uh, had over 400 ag uh, analysts and agents, operatives, uh, employees, whatever you want to call them, um, in various uh, publications like the New York Times. We also found out then that the CIA had 400 people in the media that right. they paid. Dan Rather and Walter Cronkite. Right. Yeah. Dan Rather and Cronkite being, you know, the key players there. So you have to be careful when you're digesting mainstream media because you're also eating a big fat nugget of what the establishment wants you to believe. But when we're talking about shitty journalism, I can't emphasize the New York Times enough. I know, comment down below if you're like my father and you fucking read every article they put out, which includes this article that they put out. It was really fun talking to him about it. Um, uh -oh. <laughs> but for some reason, the New York Times went out of their way to defend this black samurai in Ubisoft's new they Assassin's did? Creed game. <laughs> yes. And when, since when do they get into gaming? Who gives it <laughs> right? Especially. Yeah. Especially in the opinion column or, or wherever it came from. It wasn't in their gaming section. You know, the, the, the page after sports and before the the word. You saw the, the whole the story Sudoku. game thing? Uh, let me With talk about merch. The, no. <laughs> Let me talk about this real fast, and then we'll switch to that. Uh, so the New York Times, being an, an incredible establishment of journalism, got an expert to weigh in on this. You know, because they're dumb New Yorker Americans, and you need a, a Japanese expert to weigh in on Japanese topics. Uh, except they got this person, Hashimoto. Right, Hashimoto was their Japanese analyst that they used in this article. The the art author, the writer, used in this article to defend Ubisoft's decisions uh, for uh, Soka or whatever the Black Samurai's name is. The problem with this is that Hashimoto 
used to work for Ubisoft and Sweet Baby Inc. If you want to talk oh, about a wow. fucking conflict of interest, wow. the New York Times, Ubisoft got Sweet Baby Inc. And allegedly, oh, according to some whistleblowers, they switched the character over from a traditional Japanese character to a black samurai post Sweet Baby Inc. involvement. And then this ex-Sweet Baby Inc., ex-Ubisoft employee is then used by the New York Times to defend Ubisoft and Sweet Baby Inc.'s decisions? Like, this is not good gen journalism. This is fucking great propaganda. But that's it. That's all I want to say. I'm not... You do... Whatever. Check it out. It's fucking infuriating. It's basically like... what, what You can't fucking trust anything you read anymore. Um, subscribe, because, you know, we have zero backing yeah we have zero financial backings at all <laughs> Rob, where, where were you talking yeah we yeah. <laughs> look at our subscriber count we, we, we we're not even taking ad revenue right fucking and we'll never we'll never bow down to big pharma fuck you I was, kelsey i was saying you saw the uh i think it was called the tory gate it was featured in one of their merch sounds familiar with that um it's a basically it's a like a one-legged gate. Uh, oh, it was the only. Yes. It was the only thing left over after uh, Hiroshima. The bombs dropped over there. All right. So and like, actually, and then, mm -hmm. and then these these people they just look at it as oh this is a a popular attraction thing there, not even knowing like the history of it, I guess, and they're just showing it off in, as part of their merch. You have to. No, you <laughs> With have the to. Black samurai so, in front of it. Just... <laughs> based is not the right word, but trolling maybe. Like Ubisoft is trying to come off as this virtual signaling motherfucker, and like their their stock price is like at a ten year low. Right? They're they're not doing a good job. Oh, definitely not with investors. But then and yeah, they have like a Funko Pop, and they they use like this iconic. It's not nothing. It's iconic iconography of uh it's, like robbie was saying a uh, leftover like remnants if, after the like nuclear they, bomb it's like if they came out with some merch of like the twin towers and they're like oh look it's the twin towers but like this, not even is this robbie is this colonialism in the 21st century they took the japanese samurai and they made him black and then we just put a reminder of how fucking strong america is by putting nuclear war iconography in the which, the merchandising which apparently from some insiders there that didn't want to give up their names it, it was re the decision to change that was related to like george floyd and blm and all that while right, they're yeah. making mm -hmm. it yeah 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 after yeah that's when they got sweet baby ink involvement which i was alluding to earlier yeah they it was a traditional character and then uh the summer of peace happened or whatever it's called <laughs> <laughs> Summer of mostly pe peaceful protests. And yeah, and so now Ubisoft is facing um, the backlash from this. Well, so it's not even it's not even just from that to um, I forget the studio just released the trailer for the new ghosts of Shishima, the the second the sequel that they're mm -hmm. doing. Yeah, Yotia. And, and it is it it's Yotai, I think it is. Yotai. That's and it. it is yeah, it's gonna just from the trailers alone, it looks like it's going to blow away anything Ubisoft comes out with. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that it's Assassin's so Creed is on its, like, ninth game, and it's, like, the same thing over and over again. We're just doing Samurai this time. And uh, I don't know who the other, you know, company is, but they come out with a new ghost. And it's like, yeah, you're screwed. Uh, you know? Sucker Punch. Yeah, it really yeah. is. The timing is hilarious, and I loved seeing that. Cause, it was uh, a Sucker Punch to Ubisoft. When... when the ghost trailer uh, dropped on X. Uh, like literally, Ubisoft was trending uh, because of like how bad this new Assassin's Creed looks to ghosts. Yeah, it's gonna definitely negatively impact them. I actually watched a fantastic video by uh, Megatron. Shout out to Megatron on YouTube. Definitely check him out uh, if you're into like history and linguistics and. You know, just 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 fun 
you know, tell it, tell it how it is kind of uh, history stories. Metatron uh, is pretty great, but he's also been diving into like, you know, more recent stuff, like uh, looking at the historical accuracy for having uh, Yasuki as the Black Samurai in um, Assassin's Creed. I'm messing his name up. I, I'm, I apologize. Uh, but what I don't apologize for is how much I fucking loved the Penguin. You guys ready to dive into it? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Let's holy do it. shit. Season one, episode two, Inside Man. And this is a perfect title for this episode. Because, dude, the penguin is the inside man. Like, I was talking about the uh, top of the episode. You know, he's the inside man for the Moronis, the Carmine, or Carmine, the Falcons, uh, and now for Hangman, right? He's He's won over the trust of Hangman. This episode, let's go around round table. Did you notice the subtle uh, name drop for the Riddler? At one, it was like uh-huh. a bartender. Yeah, he's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank I, the I Riddler. Had re- I, re- I had to rewind it just to make, just double check if that's what he said. Because of the drops, right? The Riddler disrupted the drop flow, and that detective. We'll talk about uh, Detective Crackhead, but Detective Drophead. Yeah, he was just looking for some drops. Duh, it was so good. As soon as he put those drops in, he's like. Yes, how can I help you today? He was like like level three <laughs> customer like tech support. He's like, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll do it. What do you want me to do? I'll go kidnap a kid. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I'll go, I'll go to the hospital. You got some drops? You got some drops for me? I'll, I'll drug go. the drug that you drop into your eye. Incredible, right? Yeah, that doesn't seem safe at all. Uh, but let's let's break down the episode. What do you think, Robbie? Overall thoughts? IMDb gave it an eight point nine out of ten, and I could not disagree. At yeah. All. That sounds about right. <laughs> Excellent episode, Matthew. It was really think? good. I didn't even realize I was watching a DC film uh, show. That's how great yeah. it was. Yeah. You forget. You forget it's even DC. Yeah. It's, it's not just... DC. It's just grounded, gritty. The only time it just happens to be based in Gotham. The only <laughs> time you remember it's DC was that perfect title scene. When they turn the G from Penguin and it's like overlaced on like his his crooked pointy nose. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's like yeah, it's it's probably gonna be one of our thumbnails. But you think uh, there's gonna be at least a little Batman Easter egg or reference somewhere? Well, I'm telling you, yeah. kind of I'm sure they're I'm sure they're going to maybe even just like a background TV that mentions Batman or something. You got to. <laughs> well, I figured that was a very Alfred Hitchcock, uh, you know, uh, thing because he would turn around and then the the uh he, he would be highlighted and then it match it it you know definitely a call back to alfred hitchcock hitchcock sorry and i think that was kind of cool because he wrote a lot of you these mean alfred like, uh, hitch penguin yeah exactly ah, where's my where's my rim shot robbie <laughs> so sorry you were saying is alfred hitchcock <laughs> thank you sir <laughs> <laughs> really? But this seems like this seems like a show he would write, like this this like kind of thriller, this dark thriller, a thriller. Uh, that that is kind of like gritty and you know gothic horror almost. Um, so I thought it was like just a, a nice play on play on that. I think it was a good uh, homage or call to. Oh, can I ask you, Robbie, and you, Matt, uh, as straight white men? How do you feel about Sophia Falcone, aka the Hangman? Are you, as the general public wants to portray a bigot, are you sexist towards this amazing female character, or are you on fucking board and you want to see her wreck Gotham and the Falcones? Uh, Robbie, let's start with you. I thought you were talking about if I, what would I think of her? Like I'd be scared of her. Like, I'd be scared of her too. But as as an yeah. audience member, as right? A, yeah, as an audience member, yeah, more of it. Perfect, <laughs> Ma- Matthew. See what, Owen, see what she does. Uh, Ewan McGregor yeah. thinks you're racist and sexist. Would does this impact you at all? Oh, you know this. This we look at. Uh, uh, you know Agatha versus this, and I can say. Um, this is a character written so much better. Oh, sit next actually, to Agatha. I have even watched it. I do after yeah, hearing about it. it. After but, hearing about it, I don't even know if I want to start it. 
Look, I'll this, tell you this. This goes to show you, I'm willing to, I'm willing to watch a female lead and and support a female lead character, just write her well. And this, Especially I'm like really after House of Dragon. It's kind of like this is this is like a kind of like fuck you to the establishment. Like she's kind of just coming in and taking over. And I really like the story that they're being you know, building, you know, because the other guy comes in and takes over, and she's like trying to like push back a little bit. And it's like you really root for her, even though she's insane You're and evil fucking you right. know she this is actually a girl boss moment this girl is trying to undermine the patriarchy be a girl boss and overthrow luca and all the dipshits around him okay. or her and i'm actually okay with it because it's gr- written girl so boss well goes too far yeah you can girl boss yeah <laughs> when, you can... when you get when you get the like psychotic killer girl boss like <laughs> perfect right uh there's i can't remember this youtube channel's name but like one of his tropes is like when miss marvel's girl boss is too close to the sun or something like that and it's like when wandavision girl boss is too close to the sun he, he makes pretty pretty funny uh, uh videos um i don't remember the channel oh name. dude like one thing i was thinking about the uh the dude who got shot in the back after she was wanting to because uh after he had the knife planted in his oh castillo pocket. yes yeah yeah i was thinking like Probably did him a favor just shooting him right there versus what whatever the hell she's gonna oh, do. Oh, the to torture! Him. Absolutely. Oh, what about that f- half a second plot twist? Because you think the penguin's gonna plant it in VT because he's been trying to plant fucking so much. Are right, we gonna talk about this? The penguin's so he, fucking crafty. It is so smooth he's and like one just fuck on up his after feet. another. But you think he's gonna he's gonna plant the the knife in Vidi to because that's who he's been trying to frame this whole fucking episode. And then Vidi is clean, and you're like, wait, what? I like looked over my wife, and I was like, what? And then they found oh, him yeah, in Castillo, exactly. and I was like, ah, like dude, get him, get, get. the penguin's so clever, dude. I and they, <laughs> they call him the penguin this episode. Nice little. Oh I yeah, one of them. One of them. I was sure that was that. Vidi, the, the, the dickhead. Him. Yeah, pin, yeah. You know, it's such a, a slang term. You know, to in, insult the guy. Hey man, you you are like a penguin because you're club foot. You know, that'd be like you calling a fat bitch Lizzo because she's fat. You know, that's, that's not some, very nice. That's some disability shaming right there. Or you walk with a limp. Yeah, right. What's you're gonna call him the penguin. You. Uh, and then he just what? leans into the name, I guess. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Speaking of girl bosses, I mean, you call it's Sal like calling a guy with no legs like Stumpy or something. Yeah, or Lieutenant Dan, not cool, man. Well, not really cool. Quick, I, I, I uh, was watching a uh, reading this thing about how to give people like nicknames if you're writing a book, and I say, hey, if you're writing a military book, uh, don't give people like cool or like movies don't give people cool n- nicknames like laser or maverick or you know like whatever uh they're gonna have like uh, uh stupid nicknames like stumps or squats or whatever because in the military what happens is a lot of times you do something stupid and then you get and that's how you get your nickname, nickname. Uh, and so um they they referenced alien that's funny. uh aliens you know, but they're like, never give somebody a cool nickname because you never get a nickname for doing something cool. You always get a nickname for doing something <laughs> stupid. And I think that's that's right. that was like some of the best advice yeah. I've ever that's seen right. in writing a book or, or a movie. Fuck, yeah. that's such good writing. So advice. funny. That is perfect, dude. That is so true, though. I mean, think about it. my nickname, yeah. Tim. Yeah. Where do you think that came yeah. from? Wait, I got, I I got two was... children, you know. But, ah, just a tip was not being, I wish you would call you full insertion in that case. That or, or here, or here, <laughs> you know, the penguin, this is a perfect example of it. He waddles like a penguin. Mm-hmm. Whereas in Tim Burton, Tim Burton's film, he's like literally a penguin that lives with penguins. Um, <laughs> and he puts you know, little bombs on uh, the penguin and he eats, <laughs> he eats yeah. raw fish. He's yeah. a literal yeah. penguin. Yeah. Uh, it was the nineties. Look, like, dude, the drugs were different. The drugs were different. I've been told. Uh, you were getting off the coke, and they you're, were you know, as like, well made. But uh, that, that's the point I'm trying to make, though. Is like, you give somebody a shitty nickname. Been into and like, in the '90s. This is this is supposed to be a you know, an insult to him that he takes on that persona. He is now the penguin. So I think that's just really He's cool. Got that purple a great example. Yeah, great example of good writing. I yeah. 
love it. Yeah, I mean, if somebody's going to if somebody's going to insult you with a, a bad nickname, it's better to own it. For sure. For, for sure. sure. Yeah, no. Uh 100%. Like my lean nickname for major. It. Yeah. Majorly hot. I had to lean into it, right? I mean, Tim and I were just friends, but I've stepped into the role. Uh and that's, you know, he calls me daddy now, which is our number one podcast. Oh god. Uh, oh, but speaking speaking of girl bosses, uh, oh. Sal Maroney's wife, Shahira Agasadlo. <clears throat> God bless you. Show here, Uh I apologize. I hope, yeah, in edit, I'll probably just replace that name with someone saying it properly. But guys, that's the badass bitch from The Expanse. That was yep. the admiral who smoked twenty packs a day. She, I love her. What? She is okay. such a ball buster. She's such a strong woman. I, I really enjoy all of her roles when, when she's acting. Um, the wife for Sal Maroney. That's the uh, admiral. That's the badass admiral bitch from uh, the Expanse. Here's my thing. Are we going to be like, is this a woke property? Because Sal Maroney's not really in charge. Like even in the fucking episode clancy looks over uh to his wife to get permission like is this what we want to do do we want to partner with the penguin i want to take the approach that he's in jail so his strong badass wife is just kind of like running things on the outside but comment down below what do you think is this some kind of woke agenda undermining or is this just a logical conclusion and great writing what do you think, guys? I'm starting to, I'm, I'm leaning towards this great writing more than woke bullshit. I'm not smelling the gin on this one. No, I literally oh, think yeah. that Just he's the one actually writing. running the empire. And, uh, and you, you don't know, hire, he, you don't hire this bitch ball. to sit in the background. You don't hire this girl yeah. to play okay. second fiddle. Well, this, this makes me curious as to where the conflict is going to come later on mid-season um that's 100 percent going to involve her because you know directions. she's going to get yeah yeah she's going to get involved and season five there's going to be a cliffhanger and she's going to do something crazy and you're just like okay okay well how about we find out who the naked lady is in these pictures hmm. am i not wrong hmm. this is so it's it's uh luca's wife so apparently VD's been cheating or, or, or Luca's wife has been cheating with VD. We all know VD's marital status. Uh, but we saw these nudes like back in like 2023 when the penguin came out. Like dude, this has been like a long storyline that they have planned. Uh -oh. Holy shit. There are, what were they? Like, did they plan this all out or were they like, let's just have this one guy sleep with this naked lady and then you know maybe if, if anything comes with this we'll we'll play with that in the future or do you think that they fucking already set this up to begin with i i really think that this is just a, a callback to the movie um you know they're right. like hey this is an interesting storyline this is a thread we can pull on let's tie okay. it in and that's yeah. you know once again great story writing we have you know the batman and let's use this universe that you have lean on it and let's expand upon it and you know something like this is a great example of that so great story writing because we've we already know the world now because we've seen the movie so yeah. smart 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 <laughs> The new head of the Falcone family. His name is Luca. His name is Luca. We find out. And I have no opinion on the guy. I think this would have been a nice time to put like a really famous like gangster, mobster cameo in. But maybe we'll see more of Luca. He doesn't seem to be dead yet. So uh, we'll see how long he, he sticks around in this episode. We'll see. We talked about the dirty cop. I really enjoyed that. Right, just taking, <laughs> taking a couple drops, take, taking some drops, just right out in the middle of the open. It's okay. It's no big deal. You're just a detective, you dirty cop. But then he just turns into, uh, you know, fucking Rain Man. Like, how can I help you today? 
kidnaps uh what was his name Irvard Irvad from Maloney the Maloney crime family we earlier I was talking about how I'm just in love with how smart the penguin is how much he thinks on his feet right this guy nothing's going right for him every fucking and he turn. keeps finding a way through it and he's just he's so good at it right so like yeah how because i was like i'm asking myself how are you gonna get into the basement oh well what you can just fucking do is just walk be, to the basement yeah. well no no, no. <laughs> you can be you can feign outrage you can be pissed as shit walk up to vd and the little short italian guy or whatever Oh, he's yeah, doing all the books, that. and he's like, "Yo, what the fuck? You're like, I thought, I thought you were gonna let me handle this. Now you're hiding people in the basement. Like, he's like getting them to like fucking figure. It out. Like, he's like pitting each other against each other. And then when they all walk out, mm -hmm. he just goes and he's like, "Hey, man, I need you to blame this on BD." And then we find out from Stuttering Vic that Vic didn't get the he jewels get in. The... And that so was gonna be f to frame him. Now you have to stab a bitch, right? And. So I like this because if he was still doped up on morphine, I would just say choke the guy out, As uh, asphyxiate him, smuggle him, or, or, or su suff smuggle him. Yeah, just give him a big old cuddle, suffocate him, uh, smother him with a pillow, or you know, snuggle nearby. Him. That way, you don't have any blood on your hands, literally. But that guy, penguin, had to do what he had to do and just knife the motherfucker. <laughs> and we already talked about that. It worked out great. He got the Frank Castillo. The man thinks on his feet. He's very clever. He's very smart. I am very much looking forward to seeing how the Penguin rises to power in Gotham City. I wasn't on board for this at all until seven, eight minutes uh -huh. into episode one. And now I... I didn't know what to expect I can't when wait. I started it. I want now so I'm much more of this, yes. Just all in. <laughs> so, like, sorry, Colin Farrell. You're gonna have to do like three more years of that fat suit. That's like eight hours a day. <laughs> Dude, oh, man. So I didn't realize initially that it was Colin Farrell. Like, I know. I know. Like, 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 the makeup and everything. Like, looks how much like a different person and talks. Yeah, it's crazy. It's amazing. You gotta get that accent. <laughs> so, like, I and I felt weird about this, and then I heard. Uh, I think Neurotic also said the same thing. Like. Colin Farrell didn't make a lot of sense. Not even in the Batman as a casting decision. Like, what did the casting well, director you can make say? Into a whole nother person, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Like, you're. How can this man emote? You know, I made a joke at the end of uh, last week's podcast about how this is this hypocritical double standard in Hollywood about how this is just taking away roles from fat, ugly white men. Uh, but I Colin Farrell just make it to make. He's so, how he's still emoting under all of that, how it looks so good, <laughs> I don't understand. It's movie magic Maybe is what they used to fucking call it, and I am all on board in the for mirror it. The, for the hours they're putting that on him. Because <laughs> I'm yeah. sure it takes a yeah. long time to get them all set up. Well, yeah, I think it started with eight, and I, I think I heard they got down to like four or something like that. Hours? <laughs> yeah, four hours, which is get still... Them all. Can you imagine like doing four hours, seeing four hours in makeup and then like having to do eight hours on set? Like, ugh, miserable. It must be so hard to be an actor to get paid so much money to read all those it, lines. We talked about it like two weeks ago with it's Brandon It's pretty Frazier. wild what actors go through. Okay. Yeah, Brandon, well, well, yeah, Brandon uh, Fraser broke his body, you know, the machinist with uh, Christian Bale. That guy went like uh, oh. dropped to a hundred pounds and then he it was Batman. He was buff ass Batman two years later. Like that's not healthy. Val Kilmer literally quit acting because of the Batman. He refused to do another Batman because of how ridiculous the suit was and how ridiculous production was. And he was just like, "This is not. I'd rather do that theater." Was Batman, wasn't it? And it when he refused to do Batman, that destroyed his acting career for a while because nobody wanted to work with him because they thought yeah. he was a prima donna. But you he gotta, was so you gotta play the, you gotta play. bad experience with batman that he just refused to to do it anymore so well you gotta i you know you gotta choose happiness at the end of the day choose happiness or choose work. Depends, so. depends on the weinstein uh but speaking of choosing happiness guys i don't know if you 
fucking caught on board with Rings of Power yet. But we just are finished up with the penultimate episode. That's one of my top five favorite words. Penultimate meaning the one before the last one. What's up, ladies? Um, Battle of Helm's Deep, Kirkland Edition. What did you guys think, it's Robbie? You watched it? Yeah, 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 Aregion. It is <laughs> difficult to say and spell. Oregano. Let's talk <laughs> about the kiss. Matthew, do you want to just jump off of a building right now? Or should I tell you more about how Elrond kisses his mother-in-law, Galadriel? I was watching the reviews of this episode because I refused to watch the episode. And the first review I saw just showed it and then commented on it. And I was like, no, 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 no. Ew, 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 <laughs> ew. ew. Why? Like, do they know the lore? Do they know the lore at all? This is an obvious sign that they... they do- I clearly something... with Game of Thrones too much? Bring me Game ah, of Thrones! Incest. Rob, Rob's all about it. Rob, <laughs> Rob, Rob, Rob understands the Amazon plan. <laughs> Lord of the Rings, yeah, not... incest edition. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah. <laughs> no. no, so yeah. Uh, well, I mean, okay, it, so it, it's not technically incest because <laughs> it's no, his mother they're not in related. Law. And they're not married. Right. He's not, and he's not married yet, right? But it's also like... Yeah, they're know, not related by blood. Disparo brought up a really fucking awful and hilarious theory that uh, Elrond is going to get rejected by Galadriel because she's such a queen and a girl boss. So he has to second. He has to. Elrond has to uh, settle for second best, aka her daughter. Which God, I fucking hope that's not true. I hope that is not what happens in the next three seasons. But it's definitely a bitter ass theory. I wanted to highlight because it made I mean, me her, laugh. Out loud. Major though, her I've been getting... her daughter is, has to be of age. She's got to be like a thousand or something, right? And they're elves. They're, they're... What's the age of consent in elf elf world? What what is the proper split in time for elves? Right, <laughs> it, it, if you're five hundred years older than your elven girlfriend, is that weird? You guys live forever. Leonardo DiCaprio level. You know, once she turns four hundred, <laughs> yeah. You're like yeah, what are you, uh, Anatar and Murdania? Bro, yeah, you're we were, ready to roll. We were wrong about that. We thought that smoking hot little elf uh, jeweler was going to make it to the end with Anatar. Yo, that bitch got literally cast aside over the fence and was a patsy. I know, to dude. It, to, make, to make it seem like she Elrond nice was... Shot. Losing herself, uh, was, was losing it even more. Absolutely wild. Uh, R.I.P. Redania. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, yeah. To make it look like Kel uh threw her over the edge. Uh, R.I.P. Yeah. Redania. Use the force, dude. This guy uses a lot of the fucking force. This episode. There's this time <laughs> where the elves are like surrounding him and just then he just mind fucking everybody flicks his he just twists his wrist, wrist a little bit and like the elves like turn towards each other and they all stab and kill each other and they fall over i was like oh, that's a good scene but uh my man Calibrimbor, he's too smart for you anatar you sarman son of a bitch he figured out well, that thanks this to mr mouse mr mouse is on repeat over here what were we saying matt so um from a high level this episode is a battle in which Sauron has infiltrated to make the rings and mm-hmm. has corrupted what's his name. And the orcs want to get in to kill Sauron. Yes. And then the other elves want to get in to kill Sauron. Yes. But we have a battle between elves and orcs. But the enemy of my enemy is not my friend. That's a... American, uh, that's a Earth uh, idiom, and we're on Middle Earth, so I'm not sure if that that applies here. <laughs> I understand. Why don't they pair up, kill Sauron, and then do the and then do that would make too much sense. Yeah, and you but gotta no. get them to work together. Just, 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 yeah, don't don't get these, in the way. What are these elves? Or are they humans? I have a dream today. 
In Braveheart. Elves and Orcs. In Braveheart. In Braveheart. Send the Irish. Send you know? the so, Irish. Let them, attack, yeah, let them attack, and whatever they don't destroy, then you come in afterwards. All yeah. right. Speaking of, right. what do you think, guys? Are the dwarves going to show up? During the third, or sorry, during the fourth was a no-show at the end of the episode, right? Big old callbacks. It's like Gandalf, he's like, look to me at the east in the morning. And then, you know, also I thought it was weird. He was like, look to the north. Elrond was like, look to the north. And then, then there was a hill and there was like a, one horse. One horseman. But the sun was behind it. I was like, wait, does the sun rise in the north? On Middle Earth, I'm yeah, so confused. Middle Earth, I'm so confused by that. Just like, set up however they want. Like you know, <laughs> and and in the Third Age, he's looking to the east and the sun's rising. So like, I'm sorry, did Middle Earth it's, fucking it's rotate camera, 25 degrees? Wherever the camera it, it, If you look into the astrophysical lore of of Middle Earth, major, there's a whole. Oh, I forgot numerology. My yeah, God. and then the rotational uh, vortices that impact the universal spin of the counterpoint uh, i think the dwarves get so greedy and they mine so much it tilts middle earth's axis 25 degrees right. yeah, so the, Bal the, the balrog point. pops out and farts you know, physics physics don't exist properly in middle earth either because trebuchet <laughs> can barely take down castle walls dude but and, and the way the, 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 the trebuchet like just shot. comes comes up like eh and then the rock just goes flying. Flying over! <laughs> like, that does also, not... Also, where does yeah, the water there's... go? So, we build a dam, but where does the water go? Like, you would, if, you, if you dam a river, it's gonna the water goes somewhere. On. It doesn't yeah. just, like... It's going to build up behind the dam. Right, right. And then also, on top of that... Much. Have you ever, have you ever yeah. been on, like, a, a, you know, sandbar in the lake? Have you ever and been you, in you wet me, mud? You, you sink. You, you, you tell me you can move heavy no. siege so, machinery. Here's one of my notes. I think I've got I've got written right here. Matt is going to nitpick this. Uh, so I, I, wrote, I wrote this down here in my notes. Matt's going to nitpick this. So I, I'm ready to talk about it. You're absolutely right. I 110% agree with you. Let's go ahead and and, and forego for logic. And let's, they damn the river. You're right. The water disappears, where does it go, whatever. There's a map that Tolkien drew somewhere, I'm sure. But the waterbed, the riverbed itself, would still be wet for weeks, if not months. You could not get machinery on wheels across it. I 100% agree with you. Here's my question for you and the audience. Do we, what, dam the river and then have a flash forward that says three months later? Or are we just going to suspend disbelief because it's a television show and we're going to march our little orc booties across that damp ass mud and we're going to go take a reggae on? What is more aesthetically pleasing to the audience? What do and then you have do? to push like those machines through that mud. Right? I get it. <laughs> I get we've it. Seen, we've seen the orcs poop ladders. Well, they might have had big you machine balloon tires. Bridge, you know, like you can see them build like you know, some way, or just even just having the troops come across. You don't need the siege equipment at that point. You just carry ladders and just show how, like, the orc numbers are so impressive that no matter how much you slaughter them, they just keep coming and coming and coming. And I think that's what's so, Wait, so great about you, Helm's Deep is that we know that there's just this unknown amount of orcs that just keep coming and coming and coming where you're like, holy shit, not, we're not going to survive this. At least. You know. Now, now wait. Um, can I, can I make have... a comment on the mineral composition of the of the underlying river uh, sediment? Of course. Um, That's why we based have on, you on my the podcast analysis of the footage. Noticed that the water was coming out of a, a you know a ravine, like a big rocky thing. So most of the sediment would be sand as opposed to silt because of the rocky nature of the ravine. So it's probably going to be a, a rapidly draining, um, porous material, heavy in, in pebbles and rocks and other chunky things. So, so it in seems your expert opinion... that it would be passable. Yes. Oh. I'm, I, well, I'm familiar with rivers, being, being a, a river a river goer up here in the upstate. 
where we have snow down at where you guys are. Yeah, those rivers are fucking muddy and, and mucky. But closer to the mountains, you get a lot more sand and you're able to pass over them um, a lot more easily. You have fords and things. So that's just my, I would say, I think it would be possible to do a river crossing if it were high enough in the mountains, which it does appear to be. You know what I mean? You're muted or something. But I get, oh, damn it. Oh, yeah, I sneeze. No, no, but major moving big heavy equipment across, that would be fucking impossible. So foot. Traffic, yes. Exactly. Not the trebuchets. So, so, no, 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 no. We're not even. We're not even. So we get not even just moving the siege equipment, but they are under attack by another force, which chooses to attack them through via a cavalry charge through a heavily wooded forest, it and wasn't... then onto the riverbanks. All right. Like, First off, there's no question that charge kind of into retarded, the forest, yeah, the whole and thing. then into like a, a river, right. like, into no. the forest is bad. I agree, but ye of bad faith. Okay. How do you bring up? There is, there's only one counterpoint to the cavalry, cavalry charge in the forest, is that Russell Crowe did it. Yeah. That forest is dead because of his decision, and it deserved to die because he was so stupid. All right, that horse I have no, no, no sympathy uh, for. All right, it chose it a stupid to, yeah. owner. Okay, you know. Let me ask you this though. Killing the horse, making that big <laughs> fucking deal out of it. I don't think we can no longer deny the fucking showrunners, the writers, they've at least read Tolkien. Look, dude, if you can place emphasis on killing a horse, I'm sorry if my bar is too low, but I at least know you respect Tolkien enough to understand baseline Tolkien. If you understand Tolkien's love for horses, then you don't understand anything about Tolkien at all, right? The fact that they made a big deal about killing this horse, it makes me be like, okay, somewhere between season one and season two, someone actually sat down, probably an intern, and read the books to the showrunners. That armor those horses get. That's what I want to talk about. I thought it was in bad <laughs> faith, Matt, that you would bring up the horses and the cavalry charges and not mention that... Elrond stopped by Pimp My Horse before. Dude, he... all their armor was looking that, pretty good, wasn't it? That armor was blinged out, dude. That armor looked so fucking good. Those horses, that those was horses one of my were first so hot. They, yeah, John Oliver wants, <laughs> dude. John Oliver wants to fuck each and every one of those horses. That's how good those horses looked in armor. No one that's watching us watches John Oliver, I'm sure, but that's a very very good reference. <laughs> uh, so I asked you guys, do you, th do you think Durin's going to show up during the fourth? Do you think he's going to show up next episode? Or is all hope is... Where are we in the battle, right? So, like, Sauron's still alive. Adar took the ring from Elrond, but didn't kill Elrond because he obviously can't kill Elrond. But Adar killed every other elf he's fucking met. It doesn't make any so I would say that's shit writing, but you've also written yourself into a corner. But also, why is Elrond bringing the ring in the battle? That's a fucking dumb idea. Also, can we talk about uh, the Elf King being there? Uh, Galgalad, Gal Gil Gal Gil Gal Galad, Gal Gil. -Gil, 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 -Gil. <laughs> Help me out here. I've got it written down somewhere. Um, Gal Galad, yeah. Um, he just shows up, but he's not really in charge of the army because the commander Elrond is in charge. I don't know, very confusing. But because, I like that because the, why not? I, right? I, like, I like that the king showed up. I'm I'm here where I'm needed. Anyway, that's so, the episode. So can we talk can we talk about the scene? The scene in the which scene. they consistently try to copy what worked in the past. And uh, like, there's no original writing in this at all. Um, where, what's her name? Elf gets shot by arrow after arrow after arrow after arrow, as in a callback to Boromir. Uh huh. And, so, and then she gets off the perfect out, shot. Takes out, that takes out uh. a siege weapon. Cool. 
which really doesn't contribute anything to, to the battle. So, like, I think this is a perfect example of how poor the writing is because we're trying to, like, we can't have homages. We can't have callbacks. Like, we can't have memory they, berries. We can't have feel. Is it because she's a woman, Matthew? Is it because she's no, a woman? Is it because she took more arrows than Boromir? Why, why should I care about her dying in this episode? Boromir yeah. makes sense. Yes. Boromir redeemed himself. You're not supposed to care. And... It's an Easter egg. It's like, oh, look how that person. Yeah. Actually, no. As it comes out of my mouth, oh, as I'm oh, actually oh, thinking oh, about this, no, I'm agreeing with you. Hold on, give me a second. As the words are coming out of my mouth, my, my tongue is turning bitter. I agree. This was a little bit of a sellout. Bullshit. This was a little bit of a. Uh, this wasn't so much of an Easter egg as it was a copy and paste. This was a Force Awakens, if I have to fucking say so, Matthew. This 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 is um, how we. Um, this is the acolyte, essentially. This is what. Anakin Skywalker went through is nothing because it's happened in the past before. All right. And this is what's upsetting is by several people just die like this, heroically like this. And, it, you know, it diminishes Boromir by doing a callback to this because, I, I, like, it's just frustrating. It adds uh, nothing and it just, yeah, it just diminishes. Don't do it, Matthew. Don't like let Boromir this. Or... Don't let this TV show take away your childhood. It doesn't diminish anything from Boromir. He's untouchable. I mean, he is the actor Sean Bean that infamously dies in every one of his fucking movies. So he seems to be I, very I, touchable. I do have to agree with aspect. Major on this. Is that? He, but don't it, let them it's take such it away. An epic scene, such a memorable scene from the per, from that first movie. Because he was, you know. he was a corrupted man. You thought he was going to take the ring, and then. And his right. last moments, yeah, he's redeemed. he was an the honorable man. That's right. And they did. They fucking so ruined the point, that moment. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Her doing the same thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. There's have, no point to her dying. Have a fucking. She's not redeemed. Yeah. Have an elf. Like, well, you know, it's, it's, it's to add to the tragedy of the whole. And it's to make oh. sure that Elrond never gets laid. You want to add to the tragedy? Basically, the producers are... What does it add to the story? What does it add to the story? And that's the thing. Boromir's death adds to the story. This does not. Well, it kills kills that machine that already took down the wall. One one machine. Yeah, Yeah. cool. With that that perfect shot, Kobe. (laughs) The dumbest thing ever. Can I ask... So I I have a couple follow-up questions. They're using trebuchet. It's not catapults. That seems kind of fucking pandering. They're orc engineers, though, so... It's pandering. No, no, online, I mean, for people who don't know, people aren't currently online, the it's like lore the is system in the orc trebuchet community. is a thousand times better than catapults. Cool people like trebuchets, lame people like catapults. Uh, that's like the online Reddit lore or whatever. So I'm not sure if that's pandering well, or... Actually, I feel like these people probably just grew up on the Reddit lore, so they probably just wanted to do trebuchets anyway. Trebuchets would have been, I think, um, easier to construct. Yeah. Because catapults require very specific materials. You have to have a particular type of wood. And so possibly the orcs found that, you know, they didn't didn't carry the siege equipment with them, so they were building out of the woods locally. And so they probably made design decisions based on what was the local material that's kind of my analysis of it as a dm i love that but that's definitely not what happened (laughs) you know what did happen though matthew i hope you're ready for your second your your next aneurysm because elrond told durin that he needs his axe i need your axe right so like what is actually happening here he tells Durin, King Durin, or Prince Durin the Fourth, I need your axe. And then flash forward a, a couple thousand years into the Third Age, unless we're already at the Third Age, and then uh, uh, um, Gimli says, uh, you have my axe. Like, that has to have been, like, major flashbacks for Elrond. Like, oh, that took me back a couple thousand years to when I asked that other dwarf for his axe. Yeah, like, traumatic flashback, like... Oh, God dang it. Not another dwarf promising bullshit. That does kind of explain Elrond's, like, disdain for dwarves. You know, later what on. doesn't Because remember, explain... he's like, 
Oh, dwarves, they can't be trusted. Oh, so maybe Durin doesn't, Durin the fourth doesn't show up uh, on the next episode. That would I, don't be I don't think he does. I don't think he does. Dude. I don't think he does either. Well, spoiler alert in the appendices he does. Yeah, I, I'm... But maybe we'll have a little differences in the actual show. Or maybe it's too late and even made the one ring. To... So we've got a long one in this series. You know, five, long five seasons, baby. Right, his ass, really? Yeah, well. So we got three You're, more years of this, basically. We can, Matt, Matt you can only pray. Uh, I think it's no, every no, other three, year, so we have six uh, years. Five we have and a half years. years. Yeah, yeah, we have six, five, six years, years. of this. Uh, let me ask you this. The dwarves don't awaken the Balrog and destroy Kazakh Dune until the Third Age. So I think Forrest is, I wish Forrest was here on the podcast. We miss you, brother. Um, I was really excited to to concede this point to him that he might be right. This might be a big plot twist coming up that we might actually be in the third age, uh, the beginning of the third age right now. I, it doesn't seem likely, but you know Wait, maybe what? maybe they are because so the dwarves are clearly fucking with the Balrog and they're gonna dig too deep and they're gonna awaken the Balrog. That's gonna happen in Rings of Power. But that's not supposed to happen in the books, you know, canonically until the Third Age. Forrest has this theory mm. that this show is taking place in the Third Age, not the Second. What twist in the Third Age? So this this might be it. The other thing I wanted to, to I wonder notice, about not Gandalf's journey, right? <laughs> not Gandalf. Maybe he is Gandalf after all. I thought he was the Blue Wizard. I think they had the rights, but maybe maybe they they do. Uh, it will be very interesting to to see how this goes. Uh, one last thing I wanted to be remiss about earlier, I talked about the the sexy horses that John Oliver wanted to have sex with. Uh, I said that they were just came from the set of Pimp My Horses. I fucked that joke up. I have written down a much better joke. Um, those look like Trump horses, right? If Trump had, uh, is it covered in gold? Battalion <laughs> of horses. Those look like they just came from Trump Tower. And then I wonder after the battle if this isn't the predecessor to Trump Stakes. Whatever, that's a good joke. It pulled it pulled very well. Thank you. No. Uh, some people out there are gonna be pissed oh, off with Trump Stakes are gonna like the horse the horse meat joke. It's Leave a good the Trump horse jokes meat joke. To, to, to. Leave the Trump jokes to, to old Chin Gillis there, Major. Ah! <laughs> Let's start calling really Chip Jimmy. Jimmy. Making fun of Trump. <laughs> uh, guys, I don't think there's a better way we could end this podcast than by talking about the end credits song to this fucking episode. What Jesus. has happened? What was that heavy metal garbage? that got shoved in my ear as I was watching the credits. That was horrendous. Apparently, I had to do some digging into this. Apparently, it's, it's a heavy metal song that's like inspired by or based on like the hill troll that died in the episode, wherever his name was or something. But yeah. the, not... Well, into, I, I, I as mean, someone who's meta, into, into the Zeppelin, West, it's such an amazing song. In their defense, I Led love Zeppelin Into the West. Fucking... Yeah, Led Zeppelin has a ton of uh, Led Zeppelin. ton of Middle Earth. Uh... This was not Led Zeppelin. Yeah. No, 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 no. This was Mercury well, was, Zeppelin. Well, we'll say that was slowly killing. Can roll in in Middle Earth go along? But if it was like some weird heavy metal stuff, I don't know. Very heavy so metal. No, 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 we're gonna play on this outro here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Did you have Comment the down below. Of what did you think about this episode? Do we have any final thoughts as we go around the table, Robbie? Uh, season finale of Rings of Power or Penguin episode three? What if you could only watch one next week? Uh, Penguin. Ah, oh, nine. Fuck the finale. Get out of here, finale. I'm all about the penguin. I hear you. I hear yeah. you, Roberto. Uh, Matt, are you looking forward to having to to, to stop talking about Rings of Power? I cannot wait. Can't wait. You heard it here first, guys. I'm and you heard it here last week and probably the week before. Looking forward to the finale. I'm gonna finish up with Get the plugs here. <laughs> 
Guys, thanks so much for watching. Comment down below. What did you think about The Penguin Episode 2? What a mind blower. This show is so good. I can't wait to, to finish it out. Hopefully, if you hit that subscribe button, we'll finish it out together. And Rings of Power is almost done. We got one episode left. Uh, we're going to breeze through that finale. Hopefully, it'll kill all of us in the finale so we don't have to watch seasons 3, 4, and 5. But if we do, I don't know. Things are slowly trending up. I'm not saying I would invest They're in this over into Bitcoin. Levels. But they it's are. not they are trending to Agatha levels. Upward. Okay. Absolutely the right. series is getting a little better as it goes on. A little better as it goes along. I think they've almost finished the first book okay. reading along. I appreciate it. Guys, you can find us. Hopefully you're watching us here on YouTube at Zeitgeist Zealots. If not, Instagram, Zeitgeist Zealots as well. You can talk to us on X and TikTok at Z Zealots Podcast. Comment down below, like, and subscribe for the almighty algorithm. We'll see you next time. I'm Major. Matamir. Matamir. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, hold on. I'm going outside. That was it. No, that's it. Stay there. Stay there. And I'm too. <laughs>